Come with me. Last episode, we went spearing with Tim, wrapped up a few boat jobs and got out of the yard. This episode, we use our boat as a mothership for a day's diving out of Moreton Bay with Tim. So after we left the boatyard last week, we pulled into Raby Bay to finish installing some of our electronics, which we'll get to in a later episode. But for now, Tim's just called and the forecast is looking epic. So it's 5.30 in the morning. Uh, Tim's coming to pick us up from the mothership. So gonna do a bit of spearing today. It's either this, get picked up at six from the boat or we start driving up the coast at 3 a.m. So we, we chose the, uh, the slack option as Tim would say. Anyway, let's have a coffee. Get the gear ready. What's going on there, big bird? <laughs> I'm trying to warm up. It's freezing. I'm um, making some lunches, so. This is a late start for Tim. What time did Tim want to start? 3. 3 a.m. He wanted to leave at 3. Anyway. Good day for it, though. Here he comes. Right on time. Hoi hoi. How are we? Yeah. What's that? That's how we go in your life. We get dressed slow and late. I'm ready. You want to come have a look? Or you want to do it later? Uh, let's, let's hit the high. Let's hit the high. Hit the the high the... Tide, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly yeah. what I thought. Sweet. We'd only been in the water for a couple of minutes when we saw Tim getting towed off into the distance. Tim just shot a massive wahoo. <laughs> we try to keep up with him, but he's getting towed too fast. He's miles on us. We're gonna get the boat. Yeah. <laughs> he's only driving after it. You see him? <laughs> I can't believe that. He's over there. Can you see him? You lose it. Oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's massive. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's a donkey. It's a cracking wahoo. That's massive. That's pushing 2530. Look at the size of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you were pulling my leg then. You were so relaxed. You're like, wahoo, wahoo. I didn't want to, make, I didn't want to like, go wahoo and scare yeah, yeah. Wahoo, wahoo. I'm like, you're and so full just, of crap. Like, she didn't hear me, so I was like, wahoo, wahoo. And, like, and then when you shot it, you were like, wahoo. <laughs> yeah, and then I followed them. I stayed on them. I stayed on them. They went out behind the boat like this. And the two of them went that way. I was trying to get behind him. And he's like going that way. He's trying to keep an eye on me, but I was trying to get him behind his tail like that. And then this other fellow's going, as soon as I shot him, he just went slow swim off. And I come out and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Where do you want to Because he cut down the middle, all the fresh water will go in and ruin all the meat in there. After squeezing the wahoo into the cooler, we tried a few more unsuccessful drifts before moving spots to find some craze. I noticed some nice Moses perch getting around, so I grabbed my gun and took this plate sized one for dinner. Come on, mate, that's a cracker. They taste great. Too. Yeah, that's what I thought. It'll be nice on the barbecue. Fry them whole, barbecue them whole, delicious white flesh. <laughs> Meanwhile, the guys had found the craze. It's loaded in there. Oh, 50 crates. Yeah, After grabbing a crate from his honey hole, the others all bailed. Being the only cave that we could see on this reef, 
meant that the crays were left out in the open, something you rarely see in the daytime. Now it was just a matter of finding a cray that wasn't carrying eggs. Michael was also clearly suffering from a severe case of butterfingers, so Tim jumped back in to show us how it was done. I found another honey hole! We've got all the crazy we need now. They're huge. They're huge? They're a honey hole? Big ones. There were crazy everywhere we looked. After upsizing a few of our smaller crays, we were good to go. It has the on it. After taking our cray limit, we decided to head offshore to chase some larger pelagics. After a quiet day, it was finally starting to turn on as the sun was setting. We shot the exact same thing. Yeah, simultaneous what shot. The, what the hell was that noise? It was such a loud scud shot. We wouldn't usually shoot kingfish this far north on the east coast as they get a parasite in the warmer waters which makes the flesh go mushy when you cook it. But given this was the middle of winter and the water was freezing, we were confident these ones would be okay to eat. I also managed to shoot a kingy the next drift but just missed the shot with my GoPro. The late afternoon diving was absolutely firing. I was diving on a chum line when I spooked this huge school of dewfish. After getting buzzed by this overconfident little shark and with a long drive ahead of us back to the boat, we needed to call it a day and start heading in. We had to drag ourselves away and begin the journey home. How'd you go yesterday, Michael? Pretty good day, exciting. I don't think, <laughs> you don't really realize how a sport you are as a spearer, like we went out we had whales next to the boat, like mother, calf, bulls chasing it. Um, yeah, sharks, turtles, dolphins. 
had a fighter jet like fly straight over mm, us. That was crazy. Uh, yeah, Tim got like a 32 and a half kilo wahoo, we got a big kingfish, and yeah, got a nice tasty unicorn jacket here. That's a big one too. What's today? That's a huge one. How's the spike on him? That's the biggest one I've ever shot. Now we're just uh, recovering the old spear fishing hangover. We're cleaning the boat. We've got stuff everywhere. I'm covered in bruises. Michael's just cleaning the unicorn jacket to show you how easy it is. So if you just feel down here, you'll, it'll be hard bone, hard bone, then you'll feel a soft spot. And then you just cut down about halfway. You don't want to pop the gas cavity if you can. And then you just tear it back like this. And that's all the guts and head in one go. And it's just a matter of peeling the skin off, which is super easy. That's why they call it leather jacket. It's just like taking it off. It was so yummy too. And it's like one of the tastiest, tastiest, sweetest meats. You just fry that or put it on the barbecue with a few slits in it. Look at that. So easy. That's it, done, filleted. Okay, so this is the delicious little Moses perch that I shot yesterday. Just going to, I think, scale and gut it, and we'll eat that for lunch. With ghee, 100% pure ghee. Smells oh, good. Oh, smells amazing. Mm. It's been in there for about 15 minutes, you reckon? Yeah, probably that. Flip it over. A couple of re applications of ghee. Smells oh, amazing. Pretty good. I cheated, I ate a wing already, it was amazing. Sort of tastes like chicken, it smells like chicken, though. Like. It's probably the jerk season. Mm. How is it? Mm. Looks bloody good. It's really nice. It's like really smoky and chickeny, jerk seasoning jerk and Jerk seasoning and ghee, the mix of Caribbean and so, Indian cultures. I just got the seasoning from the shops and um, yeah, it's pretty good. Really easy. Can't complain. I shot this yesterday. The jerk fish was so good, the next day we cooked the cray the exact same way. It was really good to finally use the boat as like mothership. That's exactly why we bought this boat, pretty much. So we showed Tim around the boat and <laughs> I showed him the guest room, yeah. bedroom and he was in there for ages. Oh, he's really having a good look in there. And I, I went in there and he was <laughs> testing the bed out. He's <laughs> just seeing, just seeing if bed. Wendy would put up with the rocking. Yeah. It was hilarious. He was like ready to go to bed. If you like this episode, don't forget to subscribe and ding that bell to turn on notifications. A huge thank you to our patrons for their ongoing support. How's those whales? Woo woo woo! Woo woo woo! woo. Alright Michael, I've cracked it. What's happening? Jesse thinks I need a haircut. I, <laughs> I, I'm yet to agree. In denial. It doesn't look that bad, I reckon. <laughs> across the clan. So we've, we've cracked it and she's she's been watching YouTube and she's going to cut my hair. And anyway. if all else fails, he's going to shave it. Throw caution to the wind, as they say, and start clipping.